Hello and welcome back in Intellect Tube. Today I am going to solve the previous year questions from ISRO scientist exam. So without any delay, let's start. The first question is from IC555 oscillator. Here they have given the values of two resistances RA and RB and also the value of capacitance and they are asking output frequency. Frequency of 555 oscillator can be calculated only when it operates as a stable multivibrator. In that case, capacitor charges in a duration Ra plus Rb into C and gets discharged in Rb C second. But here capacitor do not charge completely because comparator output change when capacitor voltage reaches 2 Vcc by 3. So here the duration will be shorter than Ra plus Rb into C and it gets multiplied by ln2 that is 0.693. So here time period of the waveform will be 0.693 into Ra plus 2Rb into C. And as we know the frequency is the inverse of time period so output frequency will become 1 divided by 0.693 into Ra plus 2Rb into C. When we put all the values you will get F equal to 109.3 kHz. So option B is the correct answer. In second question there is a JK flip flop and we have to define its count sequence. So let's assume all the flip flops are reset at a start. So Q1, Q2 and Q3 will be 0, 0, 0. Now since there is a bubble at clock input so all the three flip flops are negative going as triggered and it will change its value when clock changes from 1 to 0. So as soon as clock goes down Q1 will become 1 and Q1 bar will become 0. Now as Q1 bar changes here from 1 to 0 and it is clock pulse for second flip flop so Q2 will now become 1 and Q2 bar will become 0. Now as Q2 bar is clock pulse for third flip flop so Q3 will become 1. Now since all the three input to NAND gate is 1 so its output will be 0 and immediately it will clear second and third flip flop and Q2 and Q3 will change to 0. So the values of Q1, Q2 and Q3 will become 1, 0 and 0. Now for second negative going pulse Q1 will change from 1 to 0 and Q1 bar will change from 0 to 1. So change from 0 to 1 in clock pulse will not affect output of second flip flop and it will remain at 0. And no change will occur in Q3 also because Q2 bar remains same. So Q1, Q2 and Q3 will be now 0, 0 and 0. And it is the same situation as first one. So sequence will repeat itself. But none of the option is matching here because ISRO printed it wrong and they gave full marks for this question to all the students. I have also verified the answer from the answer key provided by Medizy. So don't waste your time in exam hall for questions like this because sometimes questions or options are wrongly printed. Now move to question number 3. Here a clock signal of 1 MHz is applied to a JK flip flop with J and K input as 1. So we have to calculate the frequency of output signal. Whenever J and K input are 1, output of JK flip-flop toggles its value on change on in the clock. So output signal will always change its value on negative going pulse if flip-flop is negative is triggered. So here clearly we can see that the time period of output signal is twice the time period of clock. So frequency of output signal will be half the frequency of clock signal. So option B will be right answer. In next question they have asked how many inputs and outputs does a full adder have. Since full adder is a circuit that adds two numbers along with carry so it has three inputs and the sum and the carry are the two outputs so option A is the right answer. Now in question number 5 they are asking which of the following shift register counter 
requires the most decoding circuitry. If you see the output of ring counter, ripple counter or mod counter, you can easily see the output state of Q2, Q1 and Q0 directly gives the value of clock number. If you convert them in decimal, then it will directly show the clock number. But in case of Johnson counter, output state does not reflect the clock number. So decoding circuitry will be complex for Johnson counter. Now come to question number 6. They have given a 10 bit digital to analog converter that has a step size of 10 millivolt and they are asking its full scale output and percentage resolution. Since input has 10 bits, so number of levels will be 2 to the power 10 equal to 1024 levels. Since number of steps are always one less than the number of levels, like if you have four levels, then number of steps will be three. So here number of steps will be 1023. Now it is given one step size is of 10 millivolt. So 1023 steps will be 10,230 millivolt equal to 10.23 volt. So full scale output will be 10.23 volt here. Now resolution is the minimum value that can be measured. So minimum value that can be measured here is one step that will be 10 millivolt. So percentage resolution will become 10 divided by 10,230 into 100 that will be equal to 0.1%. So option C is the correct option. Now let's move to question number 7. Here they have given waveforms of inputs A and B and output waveforms is also given and we have to identify the circuit element. So at first make a truth table and put the values in that according to the waveform. So in first case here for A equal to 1 and B equal to 1 output equal to 0. In second case, for A equal to 1 and B equal to 0, output here is 0. And in next case, for A equal to 0 and B equal to 0, output is 1. And at last, for A equal to 0 and B equal to 1, output is 0. So in the truth table, only one entry A equal to 0 and B equal to 0 has output as 1. So circuit element will be A bar into B bar that will be equal to a plus b whole bar which is a nor gate so option c will be correct option in question number eight we have to calculate maximum conversion time for a 10 bit digital ramp type analog to digital converter using a 500 kilohertz clock a ramp type adc checks all the values from zero to the value of analog input so maximum conversion time will occur when the input is maximum. So here full scale voltage will be 2 to the power 10 minus 1 that will be equal to 1023. Now time period of clock will be 1 divided by frequency that will be equal to 2 microsecond. Here since uh, one comparison takes 2 microsecond. So 1023 comparison will take 1023 into 2 that will be equal to 2046, 2046 microsecond. So option C is correct here. Next question is from digital filters. They have asked how many interpolated data points are inserted between samples when performing 4x oversampling. So this is a case of oversampling where if we perform n oversampling then number of data points that are inserted is n minus 1. Here n equal to 4 so option b that is 3 will be the right answer. In question number 10 they have given a PAM source generates 4 symbols and their respective probabilities are also given and they are asking what will be the variance for this source. So at first let's make a probability table. 
Now, as we know, the variance is equal to the expectation of x minus x bar whole square. Here, x bar is the mean value of the variable. So, let's calculate mean first. As we know, mean equal to expectation of x and that is equal to summation of xi into pxi. So, it will be equal to minus 3 into 0 0.2 plus minus 1 into 0 0.3 plus 1 into 0 0.3 plus 3 into 0 0.2 and that will become 0. So, on putting x bar equal to 0, our variance will now become expectation of x square and it will be minus 3 square into 0 0.2 plus minus 1 square into 0 0.3 plus 1 square into 0 0.3 plus 3 square into 0 0.2 that becomes 4.2 volt. So, option A is the right option. So, that's all for today. If you like this video then please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And as always, thanks for watching.